Welcome back. Best hour of their day. Jason Fernandez, Mike Lejeune of Echelon Comps, and me, the intramural king, because we are here to talk about how to run an effective intramural open at your affiliate. But first, Fern, but first, we'll wait for it. Go like and subscribe right now. Three, two, one. Do it. Go. Two hours later. All right, there we go. That's a fast two hours, by the way. If 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 you subscribe to the channel, you'll know we've got an all new show Thursdays, three thirty p.m. Eastern. I'm breaking down classes. If you want to find out how to have your class watched or a portion of your class watched, follow us. Best hour of their day on all social media platforms. All right, let's do it. We've got a Louisiana fella, Fern. Now, rumor is you two went to the same elementary school. Is this true? Facts. Facts. Same Facts. grade. No, he was uh, he was a year older than me. Yeah. Was, I was like what year was that? I don't even, when was I in elementary school? I'm I'm old that I, I'm so old that I don't remember when I was in elementary school. That's where we're at. I started doing the math. It was it's it's decades. <laughs> <laughs> we are live, Corey. Yes, live. And Nikki Sharp is right. If you want to be featured on our coach's uh, feedback, don't film it in the wrong orientation. Landscape is this landscape? Don't edit this. This will be a bad picture of me. I know what you can do with that, Cody. Um, so was Fern like a big deal, though, in elementary school? Did people think like, oh, like he's the cool kid? Oh, he was. He was a hell of a basketball player. I actually, oh, I, I okay. kid you not, That's one of dumb. like this, there's like this deep memory in my head where uh, even though he was the great above me, like our grades would kind of do recess together. I was guarding him one time and like literally half his size. I was so small. <laughs> And I was guarding. I was like, oh, shit, I am so screwed. And he goes and he does like this fake pass. And I thought and so I literally turned around and I turned back around and he pops a J right in my face. It was yeah, it was amazing. So uh, it's not the proudest moment of my in my youth, right? but I was picking on other kids at the, on the playground, <laughs> especially like elementary school. Like one year is like an eternity. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. different, different world. So oh, yeah. let, it, it's it's the best time of the year for CrossFitters. The open is coming up. We're all preparing. I did an open repeat this morning. I did the dumbbell squat burpee into the clean because I'm getting ready, just like you guys. But but first and foremost, you know, a lot of people are out there talking about how to run an effective open at their box. What separates you, Mike? Why should our listeners tune in and learn from you? Yeah, great question, man. So I've been at it for, uh, oh, man, I opened my first affiliate in 2012. So this will be, uh, we just hit our 10-year and I think I, I went through the same struggle that probably a lot of us has been at. So first two or three years, awesome. I'm putting forth all this energy. I actually slept at the gym one time. That was probably ill-advised. I don't do that in my 40s now. And then after about three years, I was like, okay, uh, I'm having to kind of convince people to do this. It's a good experience. I'm putting forth way too much effort. And uh, I'm honestly not really growing my business, which let's face it, in February, March, it's a prime time for us to grow our business. And I'm like, there's got to be a better way. And so uh, then I kind of I found this article, uh, I think it's by Chris Cooper about intramural open. And I tried it once and I was like, holy shit, this is it. And so now since then, I've done it 10 times, uh, have kind of perfected the art, I screwed up a lot. And so and then um, even kind of established a company to help with the scoring of it. And through that process, I got to meet like 50, 60 other owners where I kind of learned what they did right and wrong. And so I've kind of accumulated all this knowledge. And so now it's like, all right, let me help other owners to not do what I did when I first started. So it's been kind well, of a, you, a fun journey to get where we are today. You brought up my my kind of main thing that I want people to take away from this specific topic, which is I have, everybody knows I might be one of the most biased CrossFitters on planet earth, but like I have a very odd love hate relationship with the open for the exact reason that you brought up, which is the number of people that is true. Um, it's that means by that Corey, it's significantly better. Uh, D1, D1 versus level four, far, um, far less level fours than D1 basketball right. players on the bar. The um, which is their far, you know, box owners spending an egregious amount of time, energy, and resources to run the open. And while it's cool and it gets the gym hype, there, there's very little to no return on that. And in a lot of instances, these are gym owners, which if we score their gym with 
its overall health and fitness, the gym is really doing poorly. And I want people to do the open. I love the open. This is my 13th, 14th year of doing the open. I will never not do it. I want people to do it. However, there is a very practical or pragmatic side of me that in some instances I have to tell gym owners and I'm like, you need to spend almost no time working on the open because it's actually hurting your business. And it has nothing to do with the open. I just want to clarify that. But it is a pain point, right? Because people want to do it. But there's this juggling act, which is exactly what you brought up, which is it's not helping me. I want to do it, but it's actually not helping me. And in some instances, not recognizing that is super detrimental for boxes. And, and you brought up a, many good points there, which is like prime time for growth in the affiliate. Yep. You know, and we've said this to our clients for an affiliate, you, it's an ask as a box owner, right? You're rarely do box owners run it in such a way that they're making more money or that it's benefiting the box. It's, you know, it's important. We talk about it. Like the open is your annual physical. Am I fitter than I was last year? Or like Fern said, 13 years ago, but there are ways you can run it effectively for affiliates. So a, you're either making more money during it. It's, it's a retention tool or maybe even getting some new members in the, in the door. So for those that are completely unfamiliar, Mike, we understand what the open is as a whole, the game, like, it's the first leg of the CrossFit Games, et cetera, leads to regionals, which Fern has been a part of, et cetera. But what is the intramural? What are the basics of that? Yeah, great question. So in a nutshell, think of the intramural open as almost a, a kind of an internal friendly competition that you layer on top of it. Uh, and with the goals of one, kind of getting more folks involved and participating, two, building the community, and then three, you can actually do it in a way that actually generates revenue. Uh, and so at the, at the basic kind of 100,000 foot level, essentially you, you, break, you break your entire uh, membership or those that are interested into um, a few teams. And we'll kind of talk about how many teams you should do, all that good stuff. Um, then you start getting people to kind of join your intramural open. Once they've done that, you draft them to teams. And there's a couple different techniques you can use to do that. And then we like to do like a little recruiting period because, you know, you're going to have like with anything, you have kind of your initial adopters and let's say it's maybe 40, 50 percent of your gym. And then the teams are actually incentivized to go and recruit and get more people on their team because there's points and stuff that that they can get for that. And then once, uh, you know, lights, camera, action and all the workouts start getting posted each week, you know, we do the workouts and then there's kind of a, a point system that you can use to a encourages participating in entering a score. Right. So we actually heavily weight that because like at the end of the day, I, we, we don't have any regional athletes and, you know, we're a bunch of 40 something. So um, there are some kind of extra points for placing like top three in division. There's you can get really cool, like crazy with the divisions that you create. And then there's some other point opportunities that I actually leverage to actually build my business as well. And so what ends up happening is now you've taken something that's really cool and global and unique. Like I think the CrossFit Open is very unique because I can talk to any CrossFit in the world and we can bitch about whatever whatever you know workouts that we've done yeah. and we can we can like oh yeah we sympathize with you so i think that's really cool to bring us together but there's this whole new experience when now this competition's more local it's with people that are your friends that you sweat with every day and so there's a really cool dynamic that you can um create that is it's it's creating more moments and memories for your for your um for your gym yeah so you know that's it hundred thousand foot yeah and i love it because there's people out there that want to complain cross is a sport and not everyone should be doing a sport, which is utter bullshit, utter bullshit, right? Like, yeah. sure. Like Glassman wrote about the sport of fitness, but it's, it's not about the fact that like, Oh, it's a sport in the sense that like we're dying to move, but like we still want you to move well, but the competitive aspect of CrossFit can't be overlooked. Like even today at six 30 in the morning in my basement by myself, I got the summer jams, you know, road trip playlist playing. And I'm like, fuck, I want to beat my score from, I think it was 2017 or 18. It's like, that's the best part about Cro the competitive nature of CrossFit is what makes it so awesome. You agree with that, Fern? I think Mike's frozen right now. Uh, well, it's, it's what, it's the different, di different, differentiating factor within CrossFit, which is like, you know, and Glassman said it, this is what, you know, Sevon's 
you know, every second counts. He said, you know, people would, men would die for points. Like we can't overlook the fact that like that small competitive aspect of that is super valuable. Now, could you take it too far? For sure. And that's, and that's kind of what we're going to unpack here is like, how do we do this in a healthy manner that it doesn't become detrimental to the, to the gym? So before we dive into some of the specifics here, Mike, big things to avoid, like top three things to avoid as a box owner when running the open? Oh yeah. Great question. Uh, number one is doing it all yourself. I think, uh, that's probably something that we do a lot. Um, <laughs> as gym owners, like it's really easy to become a martyr and honestly, you won't do it as well as if you pull in the team and you're going to spend way too much time doing it. Um, so that would probably be number one. Um, two would be overdoing it. So for example, um, thank God it's only three weeks now and not five weeks, right. but I remember there was one time there was like, there was three, we kind of got three gyms together to do it. It was back in the five week era and we did five Friday night lights in a row. That was a terrible idea and completely Exhausting. unnecessary. It was just like, so don't ever do it. Like find some sort of balance. Um, and then I think the third piece is um, make sure that you look at this through a lens of how do I use this to build my business? Because our members at our an emotional highlight, they're more in touch with your gym and how great it is and they've, then they'll be all year. So how do we leverage that? How do we leverage a point system to actually do things to build our business? So that's probably like the, you know, kind of top three watch outs. Yeah. And I, and I think understanding like how cool the open is, like, for instance, like um, I was down at Waterpalooza this past weekend for, for the competition. And I was talking, I was having a pretty lengthy conversation with um, Jason Kalipa, which was cool. Like we, we jammed on a lot of stuff, but he was talking about, he's like, I'm thinking about taking a break from jujitsu for like a couple months to like ramp up training for the open i was like that's fucking great dude he's like i want to he's like i want to do well and i think that can't be overlooked and you and you this can be done in a healthy way both for the athletes and for the business and that's kind of the kind of the big stuff that i, I want to address right so let's start with what's let's start with the first thing so you mentioned right there is just like hey don't do it all by yourself so that leads into a more specific question is just like how do i minimize my input with while maxi maximizing the output, right? Like what's minimum effective dose for the affiliate right. owner to get what they need out of this? Yeah, great question. So for me, I kind of was thinking like a little triangle. There's, there's three tenants that I think about. Um, so I already kind of mentioned, don't do it by yourself. And so that, that implies that, all right, like who do I need on my team to leverage? Um, first of all, you need someone like what I call kind of like the intramural open commissioner. Um, I actually on like our echelon comps, um, social media stuff, I'll post tomorrow exactly like what I drew up and it's going to take them about 10 hours. And the, and like, I kind of have a layout of like, all right, here's in general, total, like 10 hours across the three weeks, 10 hours total. That's it. Which means I'm spending very little. Um, and so it kind of lays out like a, just a little framework of like, right, here are the things to think about. Um, also as part of kind of your team is the captains of your teams. Um, so what, what I, what I found is really effective is for every team that we have in the intramural open, I have a member captain and then I have a coach captain because one is, um, you know, in terms of the coach, I can hold them a little bit more accountable because I can be like, Hey, you know, coach Kevin, bro, your team, like, let's pick it up a little bit. It's a little bit harder for me to have that conversation for a volunteer member. That's a captain. And but the members in, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, like. I don't want Picking to have up that Susan, She's like, I'm volunteering my time. You're like, exactly. Right. So I'm like, all right, you work for me. I can have that conversation with you. But right. the member part of that equation is really, really important. And especially who you choose. So I always choose someone that's like, you know, kind of like my C client. Like if I was going to reproduce a client, like who would it be? And it's the people that are a little bit more extroverted. And honestly, I prefer if they're not the best athlete because now it's more approachable. So if Susie sees that, Kelly is a captain and Kel like she always beats Kelly in a workout. Well, if Kelly can do it, then like Susie, I'll sign up. Um, the way that I leverage captains. So we have three teams in our gym. Um, each team is responsible for actually planning a social event. So now I've taken the planning. I have like a little SOP that I give, give them. And I also give them a budget. I'm like, Hey, knock yourself out. Like, let me know what we're going to do. We'll do one Friday night lights, one Thursday night throwdown, and either a second Friday night lights or something else different. Like you let me know. 
and tell me what you're planning. And if I have any thoughts, I'll let you know. Otherwise, run with it. What's real your budget? Quick, real quick, hold on. Before you do that, Mike, you said yeah. you had a graphic on your social media that you posted. Is that where it was? Oh, yeah. I'm going to post it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, real quick, Cody's going to pull it up. Oh, you, ha you haven't posted it yet. No, okay. no. Post it tomorrow. Okay, yeah. cool. So right. check out Mike little, at Eshon. The little Com. teaser to follow. Yeah. yeah, you see what I'm doing there? Oh, what pull was this, your pull up, pull up the pull up that shot there real quick, Cody? So this is your this is your webs or no, this is your social media. Yeah, right. So like yeah, if you guys are not yeah. following him, um, go follow them. You can take a look at this. Um and then that's that stuff will be broken down for you guys if you guys want to follow tomorrow. I just wanted to bring that up because you had mentioned I wanted to come back to it. Yeah, but but that. going back to that, because a lot of box owners here, like you told me not to spend money. What's your budget approximately for those for each of those events? Yeah, so I, this year I'll give them um, up to 150 bucks, and that That's includes a... like food, decorations, stuff like that. So it's enough that like we can do it right, but like you know we're not getting fog machines and all this other jazz unless some people own this stuff. Belts. So like by all means, you guys, like you guys getting these belts? Yeah, the oh, it's it's amazing. Belts. Title belt. <laughs> you know, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about best practices, but one thing that can't be overlooked is, you know, the open's an opportunity for everyone to, to shine as far as like their performance. And typically that looks like the best get the most shine, meaning whoever performs the best, be it in the worldwide open, their age group, et cetera. But we want to make this all inclusive and we want everyone involved. And part of that is like you said, put your, your average Joe, if you will, as a yes. captain to show everyone like, because this is what happens too. Like three years from now, Sally's like, I don't know what I got, but man, yes. if, if that's where the retention tool comes in, if Sally does it this year and she just joined, imagine how much better she's going to be next year and the year after when she looks back and she's like, that's my affiliate. Thank you. Look where I am now. hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's interesting and we can get into it later, but like I even kind of take that into account with how we do our divisions. Um, because you can break up divisions by, you know, um, how many years have you done CrossFit? So, like, I have 38 people that have been here for less than a year. So, this year, I might do a division where it's for people that are a year or less. So, now these newbies get a chance to shine. Um, but kind of getting back to your question about, like, how do we not spend all this time? So, one is leaning on others, right? And what's also great about that is when I'm involving others, they're more invested. So, you have more people that are driving it versus just you. Uh, and that's really, really important. Um, the second thing is to automate. And obviously I'm a little biased here, but if you guys have ever been to a competition or, or like thrown your own, you probably didn't use a spreadsheet. And to be frankly, like for a regular competition, you probably could, it wouldn't look very good, but it's not that hard. By the time you start throwing in the fact that like, all right, now RX scores are um, ranked ahead of scaled scores. And then some people even have a third division, uh, like a foundations division doing that ranking Excel is hard. And then you got to see, all right, well, did you actually enter a score and you have to enter the scores yourself and then tie those to a team and then bonus point. like it is a disaster. Um, so the average person spent the average gym owner spends about two hours a week actually scoring that. Now I ran um, as like our kind of an alpha test last year. I, I did two of them last year. It took me 15 minutes total um, using our automated solution, which was amazing because I got to use like five hours doing something else, which is amazing. So automate, like it's just kind of a no-brainer. And then the last piece is to simplify. Um, so it's really, I'd say kind of one of the, the, the watch outs for Intramural Open is it's really easy to get overly creative. So I, I talked to some gym owners and they have like 10 bonus point opportunities in one week. So it's like, all right, well, if you work out and it's a full moon and you're wearing my shirt, then like you get three points. And then if you, you know, do it backwards, you get another five points. So everything like that, like all well and good. And there's some of these things are really good ideas, but the more things like you, that you have like that, that's manual tracking. That's manual entry. Cause there's no system in the world. That's like, you can't put up. I mean, I guess there's probably AI these days that can probably pick that stuff up, but we'll right started. now, I'm, all about AI, dude. I'm, I'm looking, I'm going to put in chat GPT <laughs> right now. Be like, Hey, can that's you make a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Open. So I'll have it by the time you finish this next day. Hey, hey, but exactly. um, on, on that note, Mike, Christian put up here, should we care if members sign up? If so, how do we go about hyping that up? You're kind of alluding to it, but do you have any other, you know, tools and tricks, you know, in your tool toolbox to get people signed up or to hype it up? Yeah, great question. So should we care if members sign up? In general, yes. And here's why, because this, it, this is something that we are doing as a community, as a family, and I want you as part of it. Now, that being said, 
not everyone's going to do that, do it. And that's okay. Um, you know, there's, you, you kind of have to balance, right? There's a gray area between like, right, I'm going to put a little friendly pressure because there's going to be some people that you got to poke. And frankly, there's some people that like, like the attention of being poked and that's fine, but you don't want to overdo it. So in general, I would say we probably average about 70% of our members. I've had it as high as 90% and I'll, I'll tell you how I did that. Um, but in general, there's always going to be a certain percentage and that's okay. The big thing that we do is don't treat them differently. So when right. we do, you know, so when CrossFit headquarters announce the, the workout on Thursday night, it's always our Friday class workout. We split the class in two, we judge each other, we cheer each other on. It's awesome. Regardless, if you're signed up for the regular open and or the intramural open, you're still, we're still going to go in a couple of heats. You're still going to judge. You're still going to be judged. You're still going to fill out your scorecard. The only difference is that you're not going to enter in your score and that's okay. I'm still going to put it up on the whiteboard. And right. those people probably aren't going to show up to my social events. That's okay. I actually don't want hundred percent of people there anyway, because that's a really big social event. Um, so hopefully, so yeah, so that's, uh, oh, and then to address your question, how do we get them involved? Um, communicate about it early and often. So we post, we'll post three times a week about it starting this week. So we're, we're now exactly a month out from the open today. Um, two is when people sign up, we put it on the whiteboard. I also have like a little QR code, how they like sign up for our system officially, but I like the whiteboard because I want to create um, kind of a FOMO type thing. So if Billy comes to the noon class and his CrossFit buddy is already signed up, well, Billy's going to be like, all right, well, John signed up. So I'll sign up too. Um, we send out emails. And then, as I said, the biggest thing is this like little recruiting period. So after we've drafted people that have already said, yes, I'm signed up. Then it's like, all right, teams, well, you earn points for your teams for everyone that's participated. So it behooves you to have a big team, go out and recruit, and you will be surprised. Like people are already going to start getting competitive and there's some really good salespeople in your gym. You might not even know it. And it's, it, it means a lot more coming from them than it does for us because there's the whole kind of proximity effect. So uh, that, that recruitment period works really, really well. So I've, the other I've, thing you I've, can do, okay. I was going to say, I've like, so talk about the recruitment period. So I have heard horror stories of the recruitment thing where it starts to get clicky and then, yeah. It, and, it, yeah, and then it turns real gross. So yep. elaborate on that because that's an example of like, that something is, was well-intentioned that yeah. was a real thorn in your side where I'm totally, like, now totally. I have to break this whole thing up and, and like start <laughs> being, start being the parent here and punishing people. I'm like, you're an asshole. Yeah. Like this is ridiculous. So first of all, there's kind of two ways you can do it. Um, I've done things both ways. So even when we originally draft teams, I've done it kind of what I would consider a more traditional route where it's like, all right, if you signed up, we draft. Now, part of what I do behind the scenes is you want some sort of competitive balance. Um, so what we'll do is I'll get the captains together off camera, off screen, no one's here. And I'm like, all right, guys, like you each get call it two, call it four athletes. We'll do a little snake draft, pick them. So that, that way it starts some sort of competitive balance. And then we just do, we just kind of go um, random, like a little snake draft from there. The other way we've done it before is I've printed out um, our complete member list, regardless if they signed up and I draft them to a team. And so now so the recruitment you, is- You physically yeah. do the draft. The, yeah, the, the other thing I was gonna say is, um, yeah. take a look at, in order to create like some sort of random imbalance you could do is like you could draft- by essentially division first right so you draft that's exactly what we do in the open yeah. right so there's an even distribution on the open then you draft masters and then you draft like whatever by age group after that and that way yes whatever group it is it was evenly distributed across all the coaches and then you move 100 yeah so usually we've done a couple ways so a lot of times we'll almost go by division so like for example what's what we do very commonly i'll do like a men's division of what two years of crossfit experience or more uh, a men's division with under two years, women's over and under two years as well. I'll do, I'll set them up like, so I'll, I'm like, all right, we're going to draft all of the men's in the two and over division, all the women's in the two and over division, et cetera. Another way I've done it before is basically I've like, all right, the, you know, kind of your, your fire breathers in my gym. There's not a lot, but let's say out of a hundred of us, there's, there's 10, right? I'll take these 10. I'm like, all right, guys, behind the scenes, let's just pick. And then we'll randomly draft everyone else. Like I actually quit doing like a huge like draft night thing. Like I'll kind of like maybe televise the random part, but uh, that way it, it kind of allows me to do some more competitive balance things behind because the last thing you want is, and it's happened before when I did it completely random, like seven out of our top 10 athletes ended on one team. 
And right. I only had two teams that year. So that's another thing I always suggest like, if you have the membership to do it, have at least three teams. Um, and so like by the end of week one, it was already a blowout. And I was like giving away bonus points. <laughs> like it was my job. To like, the other you team. have socks on. You get both. Yeah. You're so spirited. You did not Here's see yourself during points. the workout. Yeah. So yeah. with that being said, I think part of the art of this is balancing it, not just physically, but also making it so – even if you don't have the best people on your team, you can still do well with these other bonus points. Well, that's exactly it. So that's the beauty in what you, how you do bonus points and participation points. So for example, when I first started running the intramural open, we gave one point away for participation and then three points if you were in a top three in division. And so by even just having like our, our less than two year division, like it was great because it gave new people an opportunity to be a coveted person to have on your team because you might be the best of the newest people, which is really great. Now what I've done is now by just entering a score, you get two points. And then if you win the workout for that division, I give you three. If you're second, you're two. And if right, you're so first, you can get, you get just one. as much from showing up and logging your score. You're one point that's off it. of being the best. And, exactly. and frankly, that's why I don't try to. I could win is what I'm right. saying. I could win. But I just you know two points is enough. I don't let Fern take yeah, it. Yeah, like I'm good. I'm you good. Give a former former Division One athlete section. You, like. you 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 could when Jay says he could win, he could win a participation award. Is what he did. <laughs> I'm a big fan of participation awards. Here's a great question because this is something that comes up. I have some people who want to participate but don't want to register online for financial reasons. I know it's easy to scoff at like it's twenty five bucks, but for yeah. for a lot of members, that's you know, they're already paying $150, $200 to be a member. Sure. They can do the workouts anyway. They're, they're not going to win. How do, how do you go, over, you know, deal with that barrier there? Yeah, it's a really great question, man. It's, um, I mean, we're, we're lucky because we're in like a, a pretty good part of town that's fairly affluent and stuff. So I don't run into this a lot, but every once in a while I do. And you kind of balance like being a business owner with being a human, um, and so, you know, there's some people, you know, like, man, this will like, like I get their personal situation. So I, I've kind of covered their fee um, for a couple of folks. Obviously, you can't do that on, on a massive scale. And then for others, like the way I look at it is, all right, if I can't. So I, I've seen people charge all over the board for the intramural open. I charge 20 bucks, um, doesn't include a shirt. And um, the way I look at it is, all right, if, if maybe they don't do it this year, but if I go and do a great enough job this year, I will prove why like, that 20 bucks, you're like, man, that was well worth it. And so I kind of see as a challenge to myself, both how I talk about it and then how I deliver on that and how really how the team delivers on that. Um, that like, all right, that was a that was a drop in the bucket for the 20 bucks. But that being said, you have some people where they're just different financial position. And I think it's that's where you balance like, all right, am I human? Do I need to be a business owner? And I think those are a case by case basis. And, and I think it's no different than dealing with members who come in and like, I love it here. I can't afford it. Like, you yeah. know, the people that you should be taking care of. So two things totally. real quick for you, Mike. One, we're going to save Christian's question because I think it's a great question after towards the end of the episode of what do you do for the winning teams? You have Go talked ahead. to gym owners around the world, around the world. Yeah. I want you to think about the following question. I want you to give us the three best practices you've learned from talking to gym owners that you now implement. But first... We're sponsored by Best Hour of Their Day. Hit it, Cody. Hey guys, Fern here. Real quick, I just wanna share a quick success story from one of the hundreds of gyms that we've been able to help inside of Affiliate U. And our mission in Best Hour of Their Day is to ultimately improve and grow the greater CrossFit community by building better boxes and creating better businesses with better coaching staff so we can bring CrossFit to the masses. Check it out. And if you think we can help you, don't hesitate to reach out. I knew that I needed help because I knew nothing about running a business. I just knew that I liked CrossFit. When I started working with Affiliate U, they were able to take my business and not give me a cookie cutter solution. They were able to look at it from a 10,000 foot view, but even better, they were able to bring me up there so that I could see it too. And look at it and go, these are the things that you need. These are the things that you're doing. And this is the first step that you need to get to where you want to go. Prior to Affiliate U, I was more or less just putting out fires. Here's here's a problem. That's the next thing I got to work on. Oh my gosh, what's the next thing I'm going to work on? I 
was never able to plan. When I started working with Affiliate U, they were able, able to help me set up a plan. And even better, they were able to help me execute the plan because a plan without executing is totally worthless. And then they're there for support. Not only are Fern and Ackerman and Marcus there to help you out, you're also in a community of other affiliate owners trying to do the same thing as you. One of the things that I love about Affiliate U is that they are about CrossFit. They're not trying to change what you're doing. They're trying to help you do CrossFit better. The affiliate model still works. There's a lot of people that are trying to help gyms, but they're trying to change what they're doing. Since working with Affiliate U, it has changed my life inside and outside the gym. It's grown my gym. I was able to start paying myself, but even better, I was able to start attending my kids' recitals. Not only did I get to go to their baseball games, I was able to coach them. I'm spending time with my wife. We're able to take vacations together. I started paying myself. If you are running a business, you need a mentor. And if you are running a CrossFit gym, I can't think of a better choice than affiliate you. Man, Fern, our sponsor, Best Hour, uh, they know what they're doing. We should pay them. We should definitely. So, you know what? Zach had me until spending more time with his wife. I was like, that all sounded great. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. Now I'm not so sure. But I like what he said. We do CrossFit better, and that's what we're talking about. That's what we're open. talking about, the Open. <laughs> the Open is part of CrossFit, right? Like, and, and it's such an amazing part. So before we hit that commercial, Mike, I said, Give me three things that you learn from other boxes that you now implement. What do you got? Yeah, great, great question. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll choose one best practice of like, in terms of building the business, using to build the business, uh, one of how folks really deliver just a, a stellar experience. And then one of how they kind of minimize time. So let's start with the building business. The best ones in the world, figure out how to make this time, um, drive the business forward, both before during and after. And here's how they do it. Um, let's start with during. During these three weeks, these, these these points that you create, like think about it, in our gym, like CrossFit in general attracts people with some sort of competitive, some, you know, like most of us were probably an athlete at some point. So there's there's some iota of competitiveness in there. And when you get like two, three teams of people that know each other that are competing against, they will do anything for silly little points. So it sounds really, really silly, but like, that is a, an extremely powerful currency. So here's an example. Um, one of the things that we do every year is, so I every week I have some sort of business building bonus point opportunity. And I learned this from others. Um, easy example, week number one, three points. If you go onto my Google reviews, leave me a five-star review and some sort of meaningful thing. Well, now I can share that and I can use that in my marketing. Another example. What I'm going to do this year is I'm going to put a video camera in the corner uh, and I'm going to and I'm going to have a prompt statement. So, for example, um, what would you tell yourself a year ago? Or what would you tell the you before you started? Hit that. Give me a video. Guess what I'm going to use for a testimonial, a testimonial. video testimonial, yeah. right? right Five bonus points, like make it like make 10. Who cares? Um, so it's stuff like that where now like and they're, they're, they already want to do it anyway. Yeah. But now they're on a people, high. But you're going to get more people doing it, too, because it benefits their team, right? It's not exactly. just exactly people who in the past might have been embarrassed to give you a video are like, yeah. man, 10 points. I'm not doing great on this workout thing. Let me yeah. let me benefit my team. And now you've got 20 social, you know, those of you that are like, I don't know what to post on social media. That's 20 to 30 clips. That's months and months of testimonials in the QR code. I'm sorry, not the QR code, but the <laughs> review, something Fern and I coach and affiliate you print out a QR code, Put it across from your toilet when you know, people and then put something saying like, hey, you're sitting here anyway. Leave us a review. Put your QR code and then you get some bonus points in there. Even better. Totally. Because what that does. But they like, might leave you a shitty review. Yeah. <laughs> hey. That's, that's a clip. Nate, yeah. if you're watching it, that's a clip. <laughs> but yeah, it's great, right? Because like Sally might not be able to do double unders for shit. But like she might be the the leader in the clubhouse in terms of point contribution because she left a review, she brought some spirit points, and she did the workout, right? So it's it's just a really so you know you're using those points to to reward the things that you and want. You're gonna so that's have, a way to do it during. Like you were saying earlier, the captains are gonna be encouraging everyone to do it because it's points. Like if you have 20 Absolutely. people on your team, that's like 200 points just in totally. reviews. So so that's one way you said the business. 
You said another way is going to be how to remove time. Yeah. So in terms of removing time, um, I mean, I think I kind of talked about it a little bit. It's just the best ones in the world. They have SNOPs of how to run this thing. And look, if you've never run the intramural open before, like, look, get a team together. You probably want to be point person just so you can kind of learn from experience. But as soon as you've done it once, save everything you did, do some sort of after action review afterwards, put it down an operating procedure and never do it yourself again. <laughs> Right. Well, that's, like, that's, you know, uh, and that's you know. the crux of all of this is just like we're, we'll, we'll kind of put up later when because uh, uh, like you have like a whole SOP and resource built for this. Right. Yes. And that's if, if you don't want to take what Mike has done, like just when you build it, you're one, you can just refine it. So like an example would be this, uh, you know, how do you promote it? It's just like, well, I'm going to send an eerie, a series of five emails. I'm like, well, draft them now and then put them in MailChimp, Constant Contact. You know, if you're using, you know, uh, you machine machine and, it. right. And it's like, oh, I got the, so next year all I have to do is like change the image and the link to register. And I can put that six email series on autopilot, like four weeks, six weeks out in front. I'm like, yes, there's certain things that you don't have to spend a ton of time and resources on. Because if you think about number one, once I build that email sequence, it's done. All I have to do is change out images. CrossFit's making the images for you. Go to the resources thing on CrossFit.com, right? Cody, pull that up if you have that in. Like, if you pull up the, if you pull up, go to the resources on CrossFit.com for the games. Like, they have a bunch of stuff in there. Like, they have all the images pre-built for you um, that you can do or that you can pull down and use yourself. Throw them in Canva. Make some, you know, easy edits to them. Done, right? You know, I, I brought it up earlier, but a lot of our clients, when they first start working with us, like we want to get more members in and we have a big push for social media, the open, you can get months and months of social media, including what the open, what CrossFit has out there for. I saw this image all over social media. This past Yeah. So weekend. drop this in Canva, make those like scribble edits with a, with a, with a marker in Canva. And then like, you can make four or five of those or have, or just, you could send those questions out to like your ambassador <clears throat> at your gym, fill them out and start posting them and tag those people on social media. Like, again, they've done a lot of the legwork for you. Learn to use Canva, everybody. It's not rocket surgery. Like you can learn it. Uh, oh, and that's new. Those are new. Actually, those are new. Like this week, those were not up last week. Those well, were the other thing is you got three amazing nights, right? Like if you're going to run Friday night lights, 4 PM to 7 PM, three weeks in a row, one of your members is a photographer, get them to come in, just snap pictures. And you've got months and months of social media content. You've got someone's, you get someone's first pull up, muscle up, whatever division they're in, that's getting shared all over the place. Absolutely. So we, what are some, we've got the resources, right? We, we can learn from you, Mike, we can go to CrossFit. You've talked about how far out, like now is really, this is go time, right? This week? Now is the time. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, the great part, like in a perfect world, you even start a little earlier, but you're not behind the eight ball. Like we have a month to go. Um, now's the perfect time. So what I would say like this week, the goal would be send out just a general thing of like, what is the intramural open? Um, just to, and start talking about it in classes. Right. And, uh, I'm going to actually post exactly what we're putting out tomorrow steal it word for word. You probably don't want to have it say CrossFit psycho. Uh, you can, it'll be weird, but mm -hmm. like change that out and literally use it verbatim. Um, yeah. So start getting that going this week. You also want to figure out who your captain's going to be and who's going to be kind of your commissioner to run it. Engage those guys later this week. As I said, I'll, I'll post um, kind of the job description of, cause your captain's gonna be like, all right, well, what's my time commitment? What do I have to do? I'm going to post that. And I'll also post um, what I'm giving to my commissioner as well. So it's done for you. Take care of that this week. And then that way it's sign up city and uh, get ready to rock and roll. And also you should probably book a demo with me. So there's that. <laughs> get that scoring thing ready. Go, go check them out. For those of you that have questions as, as we start to wrap up this episode, drop them in. We'll get to them. I know Cody's got a couple set aside. Free versus paid when it comes to the intramural open. What's, what's your opinion on that? Uh, 100% paid. All right. So if you think about the core of what we do as a business is we give coaching, um, we help achieve goals and we deliver value on emotional and community um, standpoint for, you know, for money. Like, all right, that's how we make our money. That's how we grow the business. That's how we create more opportunities. 
And so <clears throat> this is a prime opportunity for us to create additional value through experiences, coaching, <clears throat> et cetera. And so that's something that I want, you know, I'm going to spend a lot of time. My, my staff is going to, I'm going to shell out some money. So in the short term, I want to make sure I, you know, I stay with my business model of, all right, like I'm going to create value and get paid for that. But then in a the long term, you kind of have to think like, okay, well, if I give this away for free, then when I go and do a preparatory double under clinic or one afterwards, because people are frustrated that they didn't have them in the open, well, is that going to be expected to be free too? And, you know, cause so I, I think it's, it's a very slippery slope and look, you don't need to break the bank on it, but I think um, charging for your time, your expertise and a value delivering is really, really important. So when you say, when you're charging, what specifically yep. are you charging for? So obviously they have to register 20 bucks for the open. What yep. so you're charging them in addition to that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So kind of the way I look at it is, look, if you want to be part of the kind of the global landscape, which I highly recommend, like I, I don't ever recommend like, hey, we're doing this instead of this is on top of. Um, but some people are like, look, dude, I don't like I've been doing CrossFit for eight years. I really don't care where I stay. Like, I'm like, OK, that's your prerogative. And somebody right. chooses to do the intramural open. So I said at 20 bucks as well, because what I found is hey, it's, you know, literally it's comparable to the reg the regular open. But B, it, it actually generates enough revenue for me that I can actually give, you know, $150 budget to run events. I, so it's enough to where I can deliver a good value. It's also enough that like I can actually make a profit for my time. And it also is enough that I can pay my commissioner. I can pay my my coach captains, et cetera, for their time as well. Well, this is one of those. Th so there's a again, you can split the baby here. Right. So let's just say you put it out there and people are like, well, I have to pay for both, you know, to do the open at the games and I have to pay you. And I'm like, well, number one, you don't have to pay for either one of them. Right. Totally. However, many people will do that. Yeah. But if there, if, if there was somebody on the fence, they're far more likely to pay the gym than they are to pay for their open registration and Agreed. whatever. I want them to do the open, but like we're talking about what's best for affiliates right now. And if Correct. you can get those people to register for the open inside of your box, we want to encourage them to register worldwide, but like, why not? Like, you know, just based on historical data that they're willing to fork out 20 bucks. Why don't I take that 20 bucks, reinvest it in the experiential side of this. And then that will only improve. And then you end up in a scenario where you have like, you know, Lindsay at CrossFit Hendersonville, who's got, 290 i forget what the number was like there was like five people that didn't register for the open out of like an almost 300 wow. person gym yeah it's wild they were the Amazing. top they were the they were like the number number three box in the world but they were the number one box in the u.s for register uh for um open registrations and one of the things fern and i do with our clients is help affiliate owners overcome a lot of their negative talk and their own beliefs about things and you know, the, the fact that it's like, well, my members don't want to pay this or that. Look, your same members are paying a hundred dollars at every local comp more than that for typically a, a not so well run endeavor, right? They get three workouts, you know, they don't get anything else for their money. This is something that's making them, you know, they're supporting you and your community. They should want to be a part of it. And I would challenge you as an affiliate owner to change that mindset of my members don't want this to what can I do better to show the value so they do want to do it? It's value. And it's also not an obligation, right? So this the same box owners who are like, I don't, you know, this the correlation is the same, right? So like, man, the gym's struggling and they're going to spend, I don't know, thousands of dollars to go to Waterpalooza for the weekend. And I'm like, I don't know, that's a good financial investment. And same thing for the members. You know, it's not that they don't want to spend the 20 bucks. It's <coughs> they don't feel that it's worth it. Right. So that is a, and that's a hard pill to swallow because then I have to recognize I'm like, oh, shit, that's on me to make a better experience. So they and think about how think about how wild that statement is. I'm like, your members don't think that this thing that you're doing is worth twenty dollars. It's three weeks. Yeah. It's not just three workouts like twenty dollars two right. zero, not two hundred, not two thousand, not two hundred thousand, not twenty thousand. 20 we get all the 20 yeah. references. dollars 20 dollars <laughs> or the equivalent of i don't know three two. to five coffees yeah i was gonna say oh, two right. or three but right and, and and again we look at it also as like oh, it's only three workouts no like if you do this right it's really starting the day you put it up on social media and for a lot of people and maybe i don't know if you do this a lot of affiliates that i know do like a bonus fourth week where it's just a fun workout yeah. you do something like that mike 
Well, we may have done Flip Cup last time. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot, honestly, what a lot of times we do is I try something like like a Flip Cup. Um, it doesn't have to always be drinking based. By cornhole, you could do like just a fun. Yeah, I like to dovetail it inside of like our last big event. So we'll do like a Friday Night Lights. That'll lead right into like, all right, we'll do some sort of like cornhole tournament or something like that. Call it a day because, you know, it's much better now that it's three weeks. But even by the end of three weeks everyone's kind of the point where like, Hey man, that was, that was perfect. That was awesome. I'm ready to get back to like everyday training. Like I got some gaps to close. Let's get after it. So I don't like to belabor the point, but that that's just me personally. I know some other folks that like they go and do escape rooms and stuff, which is really cool. So it's just, you just have like, have um, pulse. yeah. And I think, I think it's just, it's a, it's a thoughtful planning process is really where yeah. we're going with this because you know, like what we've done in the past, depending on where it falls, you know, if, if, cause we've, if you guys go back and listen to the podcast about, you know, um, planning out your year. If you have like a pillar event that you could slide towards the end of the open, which has like this kind of like big climax at the end of, of the open, right. Which is a perfect place to put that. I think two years ago, just cause it happened to work out. We did our annual like crawfish boil. I know you'll appreciate that Yeah. at the end of the open it, that we did that on Saturday. So Friday, the last Friday night lights for three weeks was Friday, Saturday morning, big crawfish boil, big party afterwards, you know, which had nothing to do with fitness, but, you know, a hundred some odd people show up for the crawfish boil that day. Is Popeye's a big thing in Louisiana? I mean, I do like Popeye's biscuits. Popeye's. Yeah. Oh, the biscuits are unbelievable. Don't they put like Sprite in them or something? Sprite. I, so, right. Oops, yeah. Sprite. I thought it was cocaine, but it might be Sprite. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Here's a question from Lauren. And really, you know, the broader question is, how, how do we get cohesiveness from everyone at the box? Because you got your 5 a.m. crew yeah. and man... Getting that 5 a.m. crew to come in for Friday Night Lights is, totally. is not easy. So how do we include everyone that is, A, signed up for the Open? Or like you said, maybe they don't sign up for whatever reason. How do, how do, we, get, how do we get cohesiveness at the box? Yeah, great question. So to address the last part of your question um, first, even if they don't sign up, treat them like everybody else. They're still invited to everything else. They're still doing things in heats. They're still judging. They're still getting a scorecard. They're just entering scores. Um, Great point on the five, eight. like our five fifteen class is our biggest class that we have. There's no way like most of them won't come at like, they might come at Friday night lights at like 5 PM and leave by five 30, which and I also just to hang out, like maybe not hit the workout. Totally. But just like, yeah. Um, the way that we've kind of combated that is we don't do all three weeks of Friday night lights. We do a Friday night lights. We do a um, Thursday night throwdown, which is some people show up, but it's more zoom based and we'll choose like athletes to go head to head as soon as it's announced. And that's always a big draw. That's it's a little bit lower key. And then um, a lot of times we'll do something on Saturday mornings because a lot of times like cool. we don't have like a 515 on Saturday morning. Um, yeah, we kind of got to draw the line there. Yeah. So like, but well, so what it means is had, to our yeah, first the, class, our people come. So that's, yeah, and that's what like our big event. We had, we had somebody ask a question. They're like, should I just cancel all the morning classes? And I'm like, you should, if you want to piss off all of those people <laughs> right. who have no intention of working out in the afternoon. I think, and I think what people I have to remember is just like it's an event it's not mandatory we're not like don't turn it into yeah. mandatory fun because then it's actually not fun at all they can like, still contribute like, points right right now, the, 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 i mean the winner of the week could be a 5 a.m or that you know that does the best right. work or like you said the other things leaving a review dropping a testimonial you should have if if i would have like hey team fern but then i'd have like team fern 5 a.m 5 a.m contingency where it's like they're still together. They're still pushing each other. Right. We just know they're not going to be there at night. Yeah. Well, and uh, another thing you'll probably see too um, that I sort of see a lot is people are so, especially your early morning guy. Like I work out in the morning. That's when I work out the best. So I'll have some people. They'll actually come on Friday to their five fifteen a.m. class. They'll do it and they'll come back just because they're yeah. like, my body works out better. I'm in my comfort zone. I'm like, that's cool. Now what I also did last night because now it was like getting out of hand. So it was just like three or four people working out. So now I give like I give some extra points if you actually work at it. Like, yeah, and and like Corey, so, like Corey like Corey says, yeah, five a.m. people are a different yes. breed, right? Like exactly they're up at five a.m. They're waking up at four o'clock, and and like you said, it's more like, hey, my body's used to training at this time. Totally. I'm not going to bed at six o'clock, right? Like I can come in, poke my head, and have some fun, but yeah. I'm getting my workout done and over with. Well, especially um, if they have a little competitive juices. Like think about it, as competitors we want to be on the schedule that we're most comfortable in. Yeah. So like right. even more so than normal they're you know, they're competing. So they want to work out and that's fine. So you, you've seen, you know, 
ultimately hundreds of opens being run. You've run 10 plus. Oh, yeah. What are the main problems that people run into when trying to do the intramural open? I mean, the, the biggest thing for the longest time, and I'm not just saying this because I, I created the company, but the scoring aspect of it was a disaster. So before I, like when I first launched this, I did like a proof of concept back in 17, 18. I spent three days basically like programming a, um, a spreadsheet. And it was actually pretty good. It was pretty clunky. And already that was like an improvement over what everyone else had. And so it was just like, that was the biggest pain. Um, and some of that self-inflicted because some people just give away too many bonus points to the track and everything manually. But I would say that was like the biggest thing of like, don't try and score this on a spread. It is so much harder um, to do in a spreadsheet, even if you've got like a master's degree in spreadsheets. <laughs> so how does this work, right? So we just got your kind of, is it app? Based yeah, okay. it's super easy. So in a nutshell, just like you would like a normal like competition um, software, you go in, you set it up, it takes five minutes in there. You're going to set up a few things. A, how much are you going to charge for it? Um, B, what divisions are you going to have? You can do like your custom divisions. Um, C, like what teams, team names you're going to have. Um, and then it's, and then the final part is the point. So you put in how many you're going to do for participation. So if someone enters a score, how much are they going to get? Uh, and then how many points do you want to award for first in division, second in division, third division? You can make those zero. doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Once that's set up, it takes five minutes. You have a QR code and a unique URL. I print out the QR code. I post it on my whiteboard. And I, in every class, I'm like, hey, Jimmy, you in for, for the intramural open? Yes. Write your name up. You have your phone on you right now. Register. So now, like, I'm not typing stuff up and, and like, having to figure out what division they, they're choosing right then and there. They're putting their own thing. They're paying. I don't have to do any of this manual stuff. And, and I can put now, all of the unique scoring things in there I want. Right. If like, oh, if, uh, if you a great part, my friend, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. Total water, like all that crazy stuff. hundred percent. So there's like an admin pen on the background where every single week you can go and you can either give individuals or teams bonus points for whatever you like. Right. And obviously that's, that's a manual thing. Now what's awesome about it is, so it has a login. So it knows who you are. It knows, um, what division you're on. Uh, there's just a little drag and drop feature to assign you to a team. So then once the open begins, you're done outside of bonus points. So as you know, on at eight o'clock Eastern, when HQ releases the workout, you go in there, create the workout. But when you do it, you can set score entry time. So I'm going to set it for 8 p.m. on Thursday, 8 p.m. until 8 p.m. on Monday, just like HQ does. And I sit back and relax because now as soon as someone finishes their workout, just like they do for HQ, they're going to go. It's like mobile optimized. They're going to go in, hit score entry, put in their own scores. At 8 p.m. on Monday, it's going to cut off. And so I didn't have to do anything. And as soon as they enter their score, the leaderboards update both for them as an individual in their division overall and their teams. And their so teams. I don't have to do anything, which is That's great. awesome. Let's get to this question. We talked about it earlier. What do you do for the winning teams? Yeah, great question. So um, we all like I'm a big I'm a big person on like I want to, you know, and most people love to see their names in infamy. So we always do like a championship banner uh, where it has the team name and it lists every single person that's on that team. And it's really funny because especially like your OGs, just over time, they're going to be on a lot of winning teams. And so when like this time of year, I'll always hear some of my like OGs chatting. They're like, dude, well, I've, I've been on four championship teams. You've been on two. And they reference the banners and stuff. So it's so simple. Like it's, you know, it's budget friendly. It's pretty easy to do that. Um, so that's what I like to do for teams. I've also thought about maybe getting a um, like a championship trophy. The only problem is to be a little where you like engrave it every year. Um, that's pretty Stanley easy Cup. to do too. Stanley yeah, exactly. Cup. Right. Stanley it's just Cup. harder to put everyone's name on that. So that's why I like the banner. Right you know, now. and I've done the banner thing before. I like doing all the participants, but you could yeah, just, a good call. Get, like you could have a new banner, all three teams, but the winning team kind of, you know, gets winner underneath it. But that way year after year, people get to look back and see when they did, uh, you know, the open. So I think it's just a nice way to be inclusive with everybody. Yeah, that's a great point. Stanley Cup, of course. Says. So the open's coming. We got to get our information out now. If people want to use your company, can they get started right now? Yeah, absolutely. And easy thing, go to, um, I bought the website, intramealopenscoring.com. Easy to remember. Um, and that'll take you, you can book a demo. So we're doing, um, we're doing a limited release. So this is like our, our beta production lease. So, 
uh, release. So we're just going to have 30 gyms on it. That way we can serve them really well. Um, and I think we've already gotten four of those spots taken um, in the last couple of days. So, um, yeah. And then even if you decide not to use this, follow the uh, like Instagram and Facebook accounts. So I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff that you guys can use uh, that I've accumulated over the years. Just just try and make it easy for you because um, trust me, I, I want you guys to spend as little time as possible and get the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah, it's it's a the best time of year, right? It's it's once a year. It's three weeks. It's an opportunity to really showcase everything you've done at your affiliate from from fitness to camaraderie and community. The open is fantastic. Again, going back to what I said earlier, it's utter bullshit to be thinking like this isn't a sport, blah, blah, blah. Everyone at your affiliate wants to be better. Right. Your new member, Sally, the person over there who wants to lose 50 pounds. We all do. The beauty of CrossFit is that competition. Now, of course, the competition should be with yourself. When I when I did the workout this morning, I didn't look up Fern's score. I didn't look up Cody's score. I looked up my score. And it was just an opportunity to test myself against who I was three years ago, four years ago, 11 years ago. So keep the community, keep the comp petition aspect going like that's that's the best part like we can't lose sight of that like don't let it become you know divisive at your box but it's not going to happen if you do it well so do it well intramural open scoring you said it was easy it's really not that easy intramural <laughs> open scoring.com anything to that's add there Fern? no just remember like the the goal here is is minimal effective dose right it should not it should not slow down anything you have going on in the business. It should only become a lever um, and it should only propel you forward. If, if that's not the case, then I would, I would recommend that you like take a pause on that and figure out like how, cause you're clearly not doing it well. Meaning like I'm not balancing these two things well together, running the open, trying to propel the gym forward. Like you can, and you should be able to do both simultaneously. And if you're not, and if one starts to drown out the other one, then we have a we have a systems problem, right? Like any any problem in your gym is either going to be systems or people, and a lot of times it's both. So figure out what that is and see if you can make both of those things churn because that's the goal, right? If you ever want to level yourself up in a gym and move to different positions or seats in the business, like you're going to have to solve those two problems at every single level within the business: people, systems, people, systems, and you just keep going. And this is no different. Custom open shirts, good idea. Yeah, it can be. Um, we don't do them because you, you need a lot of lead time to do it, but it's, <laughs> it can um, be, it could also be a nightmare. Right? Yeah. So it like, just depends. Let the captain, let the captain of the team handle it. How about that? That's usually what we do. And I, and, and honestly, depending on the theme, like last year we did dodgeball. So we had average Joe's versus mm -hmm. uh globo gym. And that was amazing. So I love it. I love a good game yeah. of dodgeball. And I do <laughs> want to say Christian, don't compare myself to other shorts. Stature athletes. I'm throwing a challenge out there. There's a guy named Mikey Swoosh. Mikey Swoosh, he's in the uh, short stature division, and I'm I want to throw it down firm. I'm three inches away, three inches away from being in that short stature division. Oh, I wasn't sure where you were going to go with that, but yeah, I'm okay. calling for CrossFit to raise the bar five right. foot three. <laughs> I want to be in the short stature division. It's more fair that I compare myself to that division than six footers, right? Nine inches. Away. You can do burpees faster though. Not yeah. fair. So. Bullshit. It's just bullshit. And I'm telling you, Mikey Swoosh, Sean, if you're listening to this, I'm coming for you this year. I might not be able to register in that short stature division, but yes, I'm comparing myself to you guys and I'm going to smash you. All right. Let's smash the open. Let's have some fun. Check out Echelon Comps. Um, have some fun in the open. Bring it to your box. If you guys have more questions, check out Mike on social media. Hit us up because we will help you run a great uh, intramural open. A couple other things. Don't forget, Cody, bring a friend week. We've had a ton of people sign up. We've got a box in Utah, 59, I think they were up to today. We've 50. had two boxes this month who have had almost 60 people register for bring a friend week. 60 people. If you haven't signed up for the free course, go do it. It's on our site, besthouroftheirday.com. We will be back. Wednesday, breaking down the L1 manual with nutrition legend E.C. Sinkowski of the 800 Gram Challenge. And we will be here Thursday, or I will be here Thursday with Cody. We'll be giving some feedback to Coach's Cat and Brad. We look forward to seeing you then. Cody, take us out.